So you want to be part of the cool kids that have these open source Wi-Fi switches, but you suck at soldering, you don't want to deal with screwdrivers and opening stuff, well, maybe this video is for you because you can do cool stuff like this all from the switch itself. So this is one video I've been waiting to do for a long time. Maybe months of pushing or years, I don't know who's counting. But now Martin Jerry has come out with their smart switch and even their dimmer pre-flashed with Tasmoda. No soldering, no screwdrivers, no nothing. Just take it out the box, pair it with your Wi-Fi, and boom, you've got an open source, totally local control, smart switch, smart dimmer that pairs right into Home Assistant without any issues. And for you ESP Home folks, you may be going, well, ESP Home rocks and MQTT sucks and rock out with your... Stop it. Get some help. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I... Yeah, it might be. That's a little much for this beginning of the video, but... Um, let me tell him something. Um, uh, like and subscribe or you will have a flood like this. <laughs> You can also, yeah, a little bit of Tasmoda and you can jump straight to ESP Home with just using the web GUI so you can do all your things there. And no, we don't judge on which firmware you may use, except maybe my Discord, but no, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, if you want to find that, you can find that link down below for any questions and stuff and Discord, some cool people to hang out. And now I'm going to run this video a little differently because of that pre-flash switch. I mean, people, a lot of people probably don't care what's inside the thing, but then some of us do. So I'll put the little markers down below and you can find towards the end, I'll tear down the switch and look at the guts and stuff inside like, like everyone should want to see, right? So you may be asking, well, why not do Z-Wave or Zigbee or whatever? And why are we doing all these Wi-Fi devices? Well, the price of them is fairly cheap compared to especially the Zigbee and Z-Wave world. And then you don't need Z-Wave, you don't need Zigbee because, I mean, everybody has Wi-Fi in their house. And unless you're running a WRT54G, then you probably can support several different Wi-Fi devices. And these don't watch Netflix all day. They just tell their status and a couple on-offs here and there. They just lightweight on traffic because of the MQTT or maybe even the API if you're doing the ESP home thing. So don't let any of the naysayers go crazy and like, oh, it's bogging down your Wi-Fi. No, it's not these switches that are doing that. That's your media streamers and these don't stream media, unfortunately. Now I am using one of those Cliff quick test devices. I like to plug in all my different switches. You're more than welcome to go ahead and just take it out the box and you can put it in the wall and power it that way. And if you're not, don't feel safe for powering it on the desk. I know several other people have done some little makeshift cords and whatever to check things out in the desk. Just be careful when you're doing so because remember that is mains AC voltage and you could potentially end up shocking the piss out of yourself, right? So power it up and then pull up your Wi-Fi on your phone or on your computer or whatever it may be. And you're going to look for that Tasmoda dash something something access point. And it's usually going to be like a bunch of numbers and hex codes and whatever. That's the one for that particular switch. Now you may be think, well, hey, I've got several of them to do. Probably better to do one at a time. Now, once you do connect to it, if it should redirect you to a website and it may take a few seconds and it's going to redirect you to the web server on the device itself and scan for your Wi-Fi. You should see your access point. Just go ahead and click on it and then we'll put in the password. If it doesn't redirect you for some reason, maybe try a different device or tablet or phone or something like that. It should bring you to that 192.168.4.1. And it'll take a few seconds because it's scanning for the access points and then it should populate the page. Now, I like to go ahead and just click it. Make sure you do put the little check mark on Wi-Fi password because potentially if you type in the wrong one, you may have to go through some other steps and whatever. Just go ahead and, and put the little check mark so you can just go ahead and type in all your different stuff and then you can see 
what you're typing in and you know if you messed up or anything. Otherwise, it's going to have the little stars and it's a pain to see. Once you've done that, hit save. And it's going to come up with a message saying try to connect to device to network. And if it works and everything, and most of the time it does show, it'll show the IP address of where it attached to your network. It's pretty cool. You don't have to go dig for it. And it will attempt to redirect you, but I have seen that it doesn't drop the Wi-Fi quick enough, but you can see it did work here where I was running my mouth. And just remember that IP address real quick in case you have to go, or you can use Fing or your router to go dig for it. But it's pretty awesome. Boom, it's on your Wi-Fi. And the cool part about it, it's actually ready to go right now. No device templates to go dig up somewhere or whatever. Yeah, I do have some of that down below in the links in the video description if you need those, if you screw something up or whatever. But it's pretty much ready to go. You can see here, ready to go off and on we're good to go yeah the display on the gui is just for testing it doesn't instantly update now if we did bring it into home assistant it would instantly update through mqtt because that's the way it should be now currently if you can see it in the video the blue led comes on whenever the power's on and no leds are on when the power's off and there is a red led on it which means you know you could do red when it's off or you could even do red and blue to make it purple. I've used them as indicators for, for instance, blue the washing machine was running, uh, red when the dryer was running, and then if both running, well, it was purple. So the LED had nothing to do with the light because I really didn't need it. I could just look up and see, oh, hey, is the light on or off? And I just wanted to be able to see in my bedroom, hey, is the washer and dryer running or not? Or you could do whatever other little states you want. And if you really need some help with some of that and it's not too hard, you'll find, come jump in the Discord, jump in the Tasmoda channel and hey, say, hey, I need some help setting my LEDs. I'm a Martin Jerry switch. Can y'all give me a hand? Sure enough, we probably me or someone, other guru in there. What would you do next on this switch? Probably what I would do is I would go ahead and do a firmware upgrade because this is, at the recording of the video, they're going out with 1103, and I want to go ahead and go to the latest stable of Tasmoda. It's pretty simple to do, is just go ahead and hit firmware upgrade, and you'll notice already that it is OTA, Tasmoda, com, blah, 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 and it's the stock Tasmoda release that's in there. Now, if you, done some of those crazy video whatever so crazy some crackhead youtuber that with a tinfoil hat that had you block all your tasmoda devices or whatever devices from your internet you will need to unblock that temporarily or you can download it manually and just go ahead hit choose file and start upgrade and push it over manually because if you are blocking services you're going to need to provide those locally such as dns ntp server the whole nine and yeah we'll get to that maybe in another deal but not in this one don't block them from the internet it's dumb especially when you're leaving the elephant in the room like home assistant not blocked from the internet so hit start upgrade and walk away because potentially it may do a two-step upgrade and don't mess with it while it's doing its thing. Walk away, go get some something to drink, come back in a few minutes, and you may have to refresh the page, but it should be on the latest version, still ready to go and configured for you. And you can see now we have version 1202, latest stable released and ready to go on things. You can see our toggle still works. Good to go there. Now, one thing, now we're gonna bring this into Home Assistant. So a couple things you will need to make sure if you haven't already installed it, you can do it even after this. It's a simple little built-in. You don't need anything special. It's the Tasmoda integration in Home Assistant. Now, I know I did promise the ESP Home users, if you wanna go to ESP Home, one little cheat for you is you can come in here and don't feel like going digging it up. You can look at the pinout of things. And here's the exact pinout for you. You can see there's the LED, it's inverted. There's a relay button and then the LED link that should be that red one. Here's all the GPIO numbers and you can put that right into your ESP home stuff right there for you. 
them to put your bin file for ESP home is, I don't know if it's still required, but I still a habit for me is Tasmodo would check for to make sure you are upgrading a legit bin file. And I know in the past we had to disable that feature, otherwise it wouldn't allow ESP home because it didn't know what it was. If you go in here and hit firmware upgrade and then you do send over your bin file of ESP home, do make sure it's a small version. You may wanna just put like the Wi-Fi and that's about it. And that way you know it fits. Otherwise, you gotta go through a bunch of other stuff. But and if you get stuck, come in the Discord. Of course, we can't do everything in every single video, but we'd be bored. If you get a failure of some sort, I think it's like a compatibility to go turn that feature off. Is and I'm not making this up. Is this is in the Tasmodo.com docs? You can see set option 78, OTA compatibility check. It's enabled by default. So to go turn that off, if you just simply go in the console and type set option 78 or even SO78 for short for set option, 78 space one, you can just turn that feature off and that will prevent that check from running if need be. Now, if you're just doing Tasmoda, hey, perfect, great. You will need to go in here. I like to do things differently at first because they don't all come in as just Tasmoda devices. And then, yeah, it gets confusing is come in here and go to configuration and go to configure other. And to see the device name, I'll go ahead and say I'm gonna do this as, and then I'll go ahead and do OG lamp as well. And I'll leave all the HTTP, MQTT, etc. If you want to set a web password, that's where you can do it right there. Otherwise there's not one set. And I'm just gonna hit save. And that's gonna make sure that that device is gonna come into Home Assistant already named as OG Lamp. The entity won't be like Tasmoda underscore five or some crap like that. Then we need to tell it how to talk to your MQTT broker. Now, if you haven't installed that, just a simple little add-on, or if you don't do supervisor, hey, kudos to you. You do need to install an MQTT broker, of course, to run Tasmoda stuff. So we'll come in here and go to configure MQTT. And I do highly recommend if you know how to do it, if you've got PyHole, AdGuard, something like that, run a little local DNS for your host. That way you're not hard coding IPs and these configs and you can easily change stuff. So I, I'm gonna have mine as MQTT.digi. That's what I have in, in my PyHole. Makes it very simple if I need to go change MQTT. For some reason, I can just change that record, reboot all my stuff with the power, main breaker on the house, boom, they all come back on and they will pick up that new IP. I ain't gotta change 90 something switches of MQTT. It Now, you probably shouldn't have changed the port, shouldn't change the client. That's gonna be pretty unique, just leave it as is. And the topic, I wanna change that to something different. So I may put something like lamp underscore OG for some, I don't know. You can make it kind of your own thing. I like to do all lowercase, no spaces, nothing like that, no special characters, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, the kiss principle, right? Well, then you do that, and then I'll show you kind of why, but the full topic, leave it as is as well, and hit save. Now, once it's doing configuration save, it's gonna restart. I like to go and go check to make sure it says MQTT connected. And the way you do that is you hit on console, and you're looking for, and you should see MQTT connected and everything is down here, got MQT next to it and it's got all this stuff and telemetry and the whole nine yards. Now, real quick, if you are gonna put this on a light, there's a set option. And again, I'm not making this up. Set options are all in here. There's a set option 30. It makes it come over as a light because if you bring it, leave it as is and it come over as that little lightning bolt as a switch. And you really want things in the right domain, like when you're calling out to your voice assistant saying turn on the such and such. Yeah, that's why, uh, one of the reasons. You can go ahead and change that just by doing set option 30 space one, it will come over as a light. And then you can always change that after the fact too. And, but at this point, we should be able to see our stuff under Home Assistant under that Tasmoda integration. Now I have a little cheat on mine and I have the Tasmoda up here. 
And uh, that's just by quick thing, but you can go into integrations and go find it. So we're looking for that OG lamp, and there it is, NJSO1 switch. And you should be able to see, if you look closely, you can see the blue LED. Sorry for the mobile users. And that's pretty much it. You can hit add the dashboard, do your thing, change it. You can see it came across as a switch. If you don't need these other diagnostic entities, you can go ahead and hide them or whatever. It's totally up to you. And the other cool part is automatically you can see visit device if you forget the IP or whatever, and you can just go in your list, hit visit device, and boom, it pulls it back up. And that's pretty much all there is for bring it into home assistant. I know I'll kind of drawn it out and everything, but I'd like to go step by step because I just never know who is going to be watching stuff or whatever. And if they're very familiar with using Tasmoda or not with home assistant. Definitely a lot easier compared to the old days of doing all the YAML stuff and all that goodness, whatever. Yeah, that whole deal. So if you're looking for that nitty gritty and tear apart the whole thing, after this segment and the closing, I'll put the piece where I go through and show the insides and the guts of the switch. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, that's pretty cool to see stuff like that anyway, right? So if you do like these switches, definitely shoot us a comment down below. I like to do share those with Martin and Jerry. I am still pushing to get them to do us some ESP32 C3 so we can have Bluetooth in the switches. As well as, I know someone voted on different things is that fan controller. I know it'd be awesome to have a pre-flash fan controller. So definitely still let us know if you're looking for one of those and like to do share that stuff with the Martin Jerry manufacturers. So I do appreciate you watching this one. Thanks to all the Patreon subscribers, YouTube members, and the whole nine yards. We definitely couldn't do it without you. And yep, y'all know the drill. Smash all them buttons down there and y'all take care. And oh, we got stuff flying everywhere across the room. That's great. Just some bunch of nuts, right? So it's not upside down for you, unless you're in Australia, I guess. What amperage do we have? We have a 16 amp relay. Okay. And I'm not going to pull the power supply board out or anything like that. I just want to take a look at the actual switch itself because this is really the main side of things and this is the low voltage side of things right here and so this just before just unplugs and we need a phillips screwdriver so there it is you can see they have an esp 12f module they just left off the two year nonsense right and is that ai i think i don't know i have not recognized that little logo there but um i've, I've seen it before in aliexpress but hey this is just esp 8266 that's on here and there's not really a whole lot to this it's kind of the same deal before there is the little reset button down here that does tie to the reset. It just reboots the ESP. This is a dual color LED and you have full control. So you can do red, blue, or if you turn them both on, you can do purple. So you can do notifications or whatever you want because of course this is all open source. And then there's a the little button that actually, you know, ties to the paddle itself. And you can see the little ring here at the bottom kind of dimly you can see that's where that light will come through on that red and blue that's just that protective plastic on there and just like before they use the same little plate that they use on their dimmer and of course yeah speaking of the dimmer you can get the dimmers with tasmoda flashed on them as well that's those pwm dimmers that are still one of my favorite dimmers to use in the north american market so pretty cool to see that they are doing this for us. We don't have to do any chip swaps, don't have to flash. But of course, if you had to, you can see you can easily still get to all the goodness on the pins if you want, had to recover this, say, for doing a botched 
ESP home to Tasmoda or vice versa type of, you know, install on this thing. 